For more than three decades, the B-2 Spirit stood as the ultimate symbol of American air dominance. Its sleek, bat-like silhouette, gliding silently across the night sky, carried with it an aura of mystery and dread. Enemy commanders feared it not because they could confront it, but because they could not even detect it until it was too late. But history never stops, and innovation never rests. The age of the spirit has passed, and the arrival of the B-21 Raider marks a new chapter. The B-21 is not just another bomber. It is not a polished upgrade. It is an entirely new concept of warfare, born from decades of lessons and forged in the crucible of 21st century challenges, where the B-2 costs over $2 billion each, limiting its fleet to just 21 aircraft. The Raider comes in at less than a third of that cost, while carrying three times the capability. Its radar cross-section is not the size of a plane or even a bird. It is the size of a mosquito. Imagine trying to track a mosquito buzzing in a dark forest while you hold nothing but a flashlight. That is the impossible task that enemy radar operators face. And while adversaries such as China and Russia have spent decades pouring billions into radar networks and missile shields designed to counter yesterday's bombers, America has already skipped ahead. Those vast investments are now little more than empty monuments to outdated strategy. The question is no longer whether the B-21 will replace the B-2 spirit. The real question is, how long the rest of the world can pretend they have any defense left at all? When the B-2 spirit first flew in the late 1,980 seconds, it shattered everything the world thought it knew about air power. At the height of the Cold War, it gave the United States a weapon capable of slipping past the Soviet Union's most advanced radars. Its smooth, flying wing design scattered radar waves when approaching from the front, giving it a cloak of invisibility. For the time, this was nothing short of a revolution, but its stealth was directional. The spirit excelled when moving head-on, but was far less invisible from other angles. For the Soviet radars of that era, the B-2 was still devastating. It could slip through the cracks of early detection networks, rendering billion-dollar defense grids irrelevant in a matter of hours. But warfare evolves. Today's radar systems are no longer the crude single-band networks of the Cold War. They use multiple frequencies, overlapping arrays, and vast data processing power to cross-check and fuse signals. Computers can sift through enormous amounts of noise, filtering out false readings and sharpening the hunt for elusive aircraft. In this environment, directional stealth no longer suffices. A bomber that hides well from the front but reveals itself when banking or retreating is no longer enough. The B-21 Raider corrects this weakness with what engineers call 360-degree stealth. Every inch of its surface was modeled using advanced computational electromagnetics. Supercomputers tested billions of permutations of its angles and curves, rejecting thousands of designs until they found the form that simply dissolves into the background of enemy radar. Artificial intelligence then refined those designs even further, running endless simulations that no human design team could have completed in a lifetime. The result is an aircraft where every seam, panel, and contour is sculpted not for beauty, but for invisibility. It is not simply a plane. It is a mathematical ghost. And think of what that means for America's rivals. The B-2 was so terrifying that adversaries like China and Russia invested billions in advanced radar systems specifically to find it. They built dense sensor grids stretching across borders, layered radar towers with overlapping cones of detection, and integrated them with missiles designed to knock out anything that dared approach. For decades, they reassured themselves that eventually, sheer investment would close the stealth gap. And yet, the B-21 arrives and renders all of it obsolete in one stroke. Its radar cross-section is not that of a bird, a baseball, or even a pebble. Imagine the futility of trying to track a mosquito buzzing through a dark forest with nothing but a flashlight. 
Now, imagine doing that across thousands of square miles of contested airspace, while knowing that the Mosquito carries enough firepower to level your most secure bunkers. Picture an enemy radar operator staring at a glowing screen, desperately trying to distinguish a faint, flickering dot from background static. Every return signal looks the same. Was that a bird? Was it atmospheric noise? Or was it a raider already overhead, carrying precision-guided munitions to a high-value target? By the time they realize what happened, the mission will already be complete. This is the essence of modern stealth. For decades, stealth was about survival, getting in, dropping a payload, and getting out alive. But with the B-21, it has shifted into something far greater. It is not about hiding long enough to escape. It is about ensuring the enemy never even knows the attack took place until it's far too late. That is no longer survival. That is outright dominance. The future battlefield is not about whether the raider can be stopped. It is about whether anyone will even know it was there. At first glance, the raider seems modest compared to the spirit. The B-2 stretches 172 feet across, a giant flying wing unlike anything else in the skies. The raider measures closer to 132 feet. Many observers ask, why would America shrink its next generation bomber? The answer lies in stealth mathematics. Every additional surface area is another chance for radar energy to reflect. By reducing its wingspan, engineers made the B-21 far harder to detect. In the world of stealth, smaller often means stronger. Payload tells a similar story. The B-2 can haul 40,000 pounds of munitions. The Raider tops out at about half that amount. At first, critics called this a downgrade. But modern warfare is not about carrying the most bombs. It is about carrying the right ones. Today's precision-guided munitions can destroy targets with pinpoint accuracy. A single smart bomb today can wipe out a target that once required dozens of bombs. Effectiveness has replaced brute quantity. The smaller design brings new advantages too. The B-2 is restricted in where it can operate. It demands specialized hangars and long, carefully prepared runways. The Raider, by contrast, was designed to be flexible. It can operate from shorter runways, land at more dispersed bases, and deploy from a wider array of global locations. This unpredictability forces adversaries to spread their defenses thinner and makes planning against the Raider far more difficult. The Spirit embodied Cold War logic, size, payload, and nuclear deterrence. The Raider reflects 21st century thinking, precision, versatility, and survivability. It is not the biggest bomber, it is the smartest. And in modern warfare, smart always wins. The difference between the B-2 Spirit and the B-21 Raider is not just 35 years of progress. It is the difference between two technological ages. The Spirit was born in the 1,980 seconds, when the Soviet Union was still America's greatest rival. Engineers use drafting tables, clay models, and wind tunnels to shape its form. Computers were rudimentary, the internet was new, and material science was still in its infancy. By those standards, the B-2 was a masterpiece, but it was also bound by the limitations of its time. The B-21, in contrast, is a product of the digital era. Artificial intelligence and supercomputers modeled millions of potential configurations, refining every surface and seam until the aircraft became as close to invisible as possible. Every bolt placement, every panel line, every angle of its wing was digitally calculated to redirect radar waves. It is stealth engineered by mathematics on a scale the B-2's designers could never dream of. Materials tell the same story. The Spirit relies on radar-absorbing coatings that are fragile, heavy, and require constant reapplication in climate-controlled hangars. The Raider uses advanced composites that are inherently stealthy, with multifunctional coatings that are lighter, stronger, and more durable. This makes it not only harder to detect, but also far cheaper and easier to maintain. Even its appearance speaks volumes. 
where the B2's jet black paint was its hallmark, the Raider often appears lighter. That is no accident. Its stealth materials scatter and absorb energy differently, reflecting the progress of 35 years of material science. The leap from the Spirit to the Raider is not just progress, it is a transformation. The B-2 was the best of the 20th century. The B-21 is the future of the 21st century. If the Spirit had one fatal flaw, it was cost. The Air Force planned to acquire more than 130 of them. Political backlash and budget overruns cut that to just 21. Spread across such a tiny fleet, each aircraft ended up costing more than $2 billion. The B-2 became a boutique system, impressive, but too rare to shape strategy on a global scale. The Raider fixes that problem. Its projected price per unit is under $700 million, still a massive figure, but one that allows for scale. The Air Force plans to acquire at least 100 Raiders, enough to form squadrons that can sustain a constant presence. For the first time, America will have a stealth bomber not just as a symbol, but as a practical fleet. Production has been reimagined as well. Most aircraft programs suffer a 15 to 20% redesign between concept and factory. The B-21's digital first design cut that to about 1%. The result is fewer delays, fewer mistakes, and far greater efficiency. Advanced manufacturing, like modular assembly and three-dimensional printing, also slashes costs and speeds up production. The savings extend into operations. The B-2 demands specialized hangars and constant maintenance. The B-21 is engineered to be more rugged and easier to sustain. It can operate from more locations and return to service faster after each mission. This means more bombers in the air, more often, the Spirit was a technological marvel, shackled by economics. The Raider is a marvel designed for scale, and scale, in military terms, is what turns a weapon into a game changer. The Spirit was designed for one mission above all others, to carry nuclear weapons deep into Soviet territory. It excelled at that job, but it was a specialist tool. The Raider is something far broader. It is a platform designed for the complex, fluid battlefields of the 21st century. Start with range. The B-21 can fly thousands of miles on a single mission, reaching any target on Earth from secure American bases. That global reach reduces dependence on overseas facilities, many of which are vulnerable in a conflict. The Raider can strike anywhere, anytime, without warning, but range is only part of its versatility. The B-21 is optionally manned. It can fly with pilots on board, or it can operate autonomously using artificial intelligence. Imagine a stealth bomber infiltrating contested airspace, identifying targets, and striking, all without endangering a single American life. That is the future, and it is already here. Then there is its role as a command hub. The Raider can link satellites, drones, and ground forces serving as a flying headquarters. It can direct loyal wingman drones to scout, jam radars, or even sacrifice themselves to shield the bomber. A single raider can lead an entire miniature air force into battle. The B-2 was a scalpel for nuclear deterrence. The B-21 is a Swiss army knife for modern warfare. It is not just a bomber, it is an orchestrator, a director, and a battlefield commander in the skies. The spirit carried brute force. Its cavernous bays allowed it to haul enormous payloads. But that strength came from quantity. The Raider is built for quality. Precision has replaced volume. The B-21 can deploy modern precision-guided bombs that strike with surgical accuracy. It can fire long-range standoff missiles that hit targets from hundreds of miles away without ever entering hostile airspace. For hardened bunkers and underground command centers, it carries massive penetrator weapons capable of burrowing deep below the surface. And for nuclear deterrence, it integrates both current gravity bombs and new cruise missiles, keeping America's strategic arsenal credible for decades to come. But the real advantage is flexibility. The Raider was designed with an open systems architecture 
meaning it can be upgraded rapidly with new weapons, hypersonic missiles, directed energy systems, and electronic warfare pods can all be added without tearing apart the aircraft. That makes the B-21 a living platform, one that evolves as warfare evolves. This is deterrence through dominance. Adversaries cannot plan effectively when they cannot predict or defend against a strike. That uncertainty discourages aggression. At the same time, America's allies see the Raider as reassurance. They know the U.S. retains unmatched reach and can defend shared interests anywhere on the globe. Diplomatically and militarily, the B-21 strengthens coalitions while weakening potential challengers. The future only adds to this. Because of its open design, the Raider can incorporate new technologies as they mature, such as quantum secure communications, advanced artificial intelligence, and directed energy systems. It is not a static platform, but a foundation for decades of innovation. The Raider of today will not be the same as the Raider of tomorrow. It will grow, adapt, and remain at the cutting edge long after its rivals have been outpaced. This is why the B-21 does not just surpass the B-2 spirit, it completely dominates it. The spirit was perfect for the late Cold War, the Raider is perfect for the 21st century. It is cheaper, stealthier, smarter, and infinitely more adaptable. Every time the B-21 takes off, it sends a simple message, America is still decades ahead. Rivals can spend, plan, and prepare, but they cannot match what they cannot see. That is not just air power, that is strategic inevitability.